one. It's Nancy with She's Got Yarn. You know, I always got to mess with my head when I get on. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Anyways, how's everyone doing this morning? I believe it's Saturday morning. I don't remember the date. I'm not at my computer. Anyways, before I move forward, I want to say good morning, Uncle Greg. <laughs> I hope everyone's doing okay in South Carolina. He may be my next trip. The, um, I think the, um, the Luau Lido, Lido Luau in Sarasota, it may be canceled because of the devastation there. I need to call Miss Billy. Every time she calls my phone, I'm like, in, I, I was literally, I had a handful of something. I, I think one time she tried to call and I was live on YouTube. But, um, and I didn't get a chance to call her back. I feel bad. I love you, Billy. I'm sorry. Life is crazy. But, um, I'm not going to do any more lives with Steen Hatchie till it's recovered. Um, I don't, I don't know. I might, I might do video that last live. The, the quality was hurt. It was horrible and I'm sorry, but they have towers down out there. I, I couldn't believe I had bars, but I got better service at my dad under the metal building than I did out there on the river. But my assessment is yes everything is all the things to look at are devastating but it really warms my heart to see the community come together yeah people from Steen Hatchie the man that's that I'm supposed to meet in 15 minutes I'm gonna be I told him I'd be there at around 9 ish but I probably won't get there till 9 30 but um, the gentleman that offered to well that's going to cut this giant tree normal tree services would probably charge me probably about eight thousand dollars that's what it costs these days and the reason the high cost is due to the insurance liability anyways I'm headed out to steam hatchy to meet up with a gentleman and my daughter and her hubby. They're gonna help us clean up our property. But the gentleman that's coming out, he's from Steen Hatchie. And I I asked him what I owed him. He said it's it's he goes, whatever you can donate. He says this is my community and I will do anything to put it back together. So, and the equipment he's using doesn't belong to him. He has a friend that's lending him the equipment to do this. So, and um, give you guys an update. I think for those of you that watched yesterday, um, the tree that fell behind the house is petty compared to everything else, but. It fell on our neighbor's boats. It crushed his little boat. It was like a little garage, you know, an overhang that he built. It wasn't a metal one. It was like wooden with with a real roof on it anyways. It's gone. But I found out who my neighbor was. I, I didn't know who owned that house. Nobody's ever there. And all the years that we have been there, nobody is ever there. And one year they had a renter, and that was probably 10 years ago. And um, anyways, got him on the phone, and I guess Tiffany found him. I had, I had the sheriff's department trying to help me find the owners because we can't remove anything without at least a verbal sent him pictures and I got a verbal okay to remove any 
tree debris in his backyard and if the boats are crushed. But if the boats are okay, leave them. So I don't, I don't necessarily know what condition they are in. And I think he's holding on to the boats for sentimental value. This gentleman, he gave me kind of his story there that, you know, many years ago when he was younger, he's in his 80s, but when he was younger, I guess in the 90s, he lived in the camper that's butt up against the back fence that survived, an old camper <laughs> survived. He lived in that while he built that little house. And the house that he built is an adorable little house. It's a cute little house. And, um, but he's not able to get, he lives in Georgia, and he's not able to come and take care of the place. And what he told me yesterday is that he had been paying a couple to take care of the place. And that the couple told him that his place was fine. Nothing happened. You know, nothing was wrong with his place. Well, yeah, his house was fine, but there are three spots in his house that need to be closed up or he's going to have rain damage. We're going to take care of that. So he was a little upset to hear that he had some damage to his house and these people that are taking care of it that he's paying told him his house was fine. And uh, it really wasn't. I mean, it's better off than a lot. I mean, you know, he had some siding come loose. He had, there, a lot of people have vents on the peak of the, I don't know what you call that. I should know, because I, I come from the construction world. The vent through the attic. Anyways, that round thing popped out. So there's a big hole there. So we gotta try to get that back on snap on some of his siding that's a lot of that vinyl siding it's just snap on i put it up i bought when i bought my mobile home years ago i um i bought some siding that matched my home and i put it below instead of because my house was on blocks i thought it was tacky so i put siding all the way down and you start at the bottom of the mobile home and you just snap it on the rest of them just snap on. There's a few little screws you gotta put in when you first start, but basically, and you, st and you stagger it. So it looks like that's the, it's the same siding. So I'm gonna, it should be able to just snap on. But he did have a little piece of his roof peel up, and it might be able to be peeled down son-in-law could probably bend it back down and screw it in so so there's no water damage in his roof so and what I'm talking about is petty compared to the rest of steam hatching but they're gonna rebuild yesterday I introduced myself to the to a gentleman that bought my property I don't know five or six years ago he bought the property from me and the reason I got rid of it, well, I bought the house. Two weeks after I bought the house, it had four feet of water in it. Four foot of water. And the guy that I bought it from, I asked him, I said, has this house ever flooded? He said, there was a flood many years ago. You know, he lied to me. They wanted to buy it, and I told him, I said, no. I said, I don't want to be sued because the house is a flood zone. I don't want to be responsible for you losing everything. And I'm like, no, no, no. And they're like, well, we really want to buy it. And I said, live in it for a year. I figured they'd get flooded out, you know. I was just going to take the place as a loss. Or if I could, you know, I don't know. Maybe a developer could build it up. I don't know. I don't know what you can do with stuff on the coast. It's going to flood. And every year it gets worse. But they lived there for a year. It never flooded. They lived there with their two kids. Life was great. She's like, I want to buy it. So I sold it to her. That summer, yeah, she, she.
she had four feet of water or more in it. And I kind of helped him out a little bit throughout the new year, up to the new year. And it's from July to new year. I, I helped them out, told them, you know, don't worry about, because they pay me monthly. So don't worry about it. I'll eat that. Just get your life back together. I figured they would have tried to sell it. Nope. Die hard. Those people are die hard since Dean Hatchie. They, but they are, they did build like a, they built a stilt barn. They built this huge barn. It's like a two story barn. So I don't know how high it is. The water there was 20 feet. Guaranteed 20 feet. So, but he said the barn did fine. A lot of people put mobile homes that high in the air out there. I'd be afraid it'd tip it'd fall over. <laughs> but um, there was a lady down the street that had her mobile home way up in the air. It did fine. Cause her, it was above the trees, you know. Just insane. And then there's some buildings brand new. They're gone. But you can tell what's well built and what's not after a storm like that. So, but they're, 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 it's turned around, it's cleanup time. They're rebuilding right now. So it's gonna be probably a year for a lot of folks. of these like old block homes what they do is they gut the kitchen because what we did with that house when we when it flooded we gutted it and what we did was we put fiberglass doors in there like waterproofing it and, and that's what a lot of people could do if they want to stay there I think a lot of people, I don't think anybody's going to leave. Oh, I'm behind a semi. Excuse me. But it's not doing the speed limit. just record bits and bobs today throughout the day and I'll put this video together when I get home. I might share my little work crew. <laughs> As for the rest of everything, oh good this truck is turning. For my family to say good morning to you. It's Tansy cleanup time. Tiffany's coming. Her and her husband are coming to help. I raised her right. Anyhow, I know some of you guys are like, Where's Tim? He's got a messed up back, so he's home. He could come keep his company, but he's going to keep the dog's company. He's taking care of Sadie. I don't want to leave her alone all day, but she does have her buddy Zeus. Y'all, I got home yesterday real quick. I got home yesterday, 7.30. I sat down in my spot. I woke up at 2 o'clock this morning. Yeah, dirty girl. That step on the couch. I got up, took a shower, and I'm ready to 
to go. I couldn't go back to sleep. I I crocheted almost my second panel on my um, or the third panel on my um, the green and the green and gray sweater, the neon neon highlighter. It's highlighter yellow. It's green. Anyways, I've got the I've got one panel. I got the back panel done, one front panel done, and almost the other panel. So, next I just have to do the arms. Well, I'm going to I'm going to crochet it shut. And um I think before I do the arms, I'm going to do the collar. I'm going to do a pretty thick collar on it, ribbing. Put stuff away. I can't remember where I put it. 
and that goes that goes along with ADHD. Someone told me that that it's part of my ADHD because I was talking to somebody about every time I clean, I can't find anything. I have to be able to. I, I things need to be. It may look terrible to some people's eyes, like a stack of something, like on my bed. I always have stacks of stuff on. It's not the bed I sleep on, it's a spare bedroom. But I know where everything is, and, and Shay knows, she, she will straighten everything up. She knows not to move it, because I won't find it. She'll get a phone call. <laughs> where's my broom, where's my mop? Where's this, where's that? I got, you know, when you have a housekeeper, you don't have really any cleaning stuff, you know, and we had to go out, when we got Sadie, we had to go out and buy a Swiffer, and because she, you know, was having access, she doesn't do number two in the house, but she's, she's peed a few times, she still has, we have a few pads in certain areas where she keeps peeing, so we put the pee pee pads down, and, um, the only thing, there's one spot in the master bedroom she thinks the rugs are pee pee pads <laughs> so Tim's got pads down on a rug in the master bedroom that's the only spot that she, you know, she'll have an accent but she, her bladder when we take her out, it's getting bigger, you can tell there's horses healthy horses but, um, but she's getting better and that I bought that stuff that you plug in para hormone it is my vet recommended it I didn't get it the first time he recommended it and this last time he recommended it, it's for animals it okay mama dog secrete a hormone para, it's a para hormone I may not be saying that right but it's it's very calming to to a, uh, a litter of puppies when they're nursing their mamas, and they somehow scientists have developed this. It's like a Glade plug-in, and it puts off that para hormone for, and it helps dogs with thunder anxiety, separation anxiety, and she is very skittish, and I think it's due to me taking to the university because she wasn't skittish when I first got her and then I had to go on a trip and I just so regret I mean I don't know hopefully she'll outgrow it but anyways I've had the plug-in for two days and there is a significant difference in her personality she um, usually she wakes me up to go outside and go potty. She puts her paws up on me and I take her out and she goes. She's really good in the dog room. Okay. Now the rest of the house, like I said, in the master bedroom, we have to keep the door closed. Don't know why. It could be from another dog going in there from years ago, you know. But anyways, um, I've noticed the past two nights she didn't wake me up to go outside i had to, i woke up last night and i said and i when i sat up she kind of looked up at me i said let's go outside and go potty and she she'll go outside sometimes and then she'll lay down i said no go potty she'll get up and she'll go potty. she knows that command like we're out here for business <laughs> so she's doing really good and last night she was so playful and happy to see me and Sometimes, you know, she doesn't want to play with me. She's, she acts fearful, like she's afraid of me. Like, I'm going to kick her when I'm walking towards her. And one day I was watching her, and she noticed I was staring at her. And then she got real, like, scared. So, you can't stare her in the eye. Most of my dogs, I can stare in the eye. Um, I know, like, stray dogs, you, you know, if a dog's being aggressive, you don't want to look them in the eye. I do know that, but it broke my heart when she, like, just kind of, like, you could tell she was afraid of me. I scared her. I 
staring at her. And I was just watching, just looking at her because I love her. So I know not to do that. I have to watch it. But the past two days, I've seen a difference in her personality, her behavior. She seems a little more outgoing this morning. She wanted to play with me. Well, we've we've discovered we love the tennis ball. Yes, she loves the tennis ball. And I'm going to go, maybe I'll buy it today if it's not too expensive at the hardware store. You know the, it's a black foam. Well, actually, I could probably get some noodles, pool noodles, something like that. What, what you do is you... I have an L-shaped couch, so what I would do is I would duct tape the pieces together in an L-shape, and it, it'll keep it from rolling, you know, and you, you um, put it under the couch along the bottom edge so the balls don't roll under the couch, because we have to keep trying to, there's some balls under the couch, I can't reach, I got to get a broom go under there and swipe them out but yeah she keeps losing her balls <laughs> under the couch but she she walks around the house with a tennis ball in her mouth which is adorable and she will retrieve it and bring it back to me and she'll drop it when I tell her to drop it most of the time so she's learning but she knows what a ball is where's your ball so I don't know what it is about tennis balls and dogs Labradors. I mean, I know they're retrievers. They're born to retrieve. But I had a, a black female, Daisy May. You guys have heard of her. I lost her right before my channel. I was devastated. But she had cancer. And it, it was, she was young. She was 10. That's young to me. But um, she was ball crazy. I had a, um, I mean, she would dribble a soccer ball on the soccer field. We would take her to Tyler's practice. If you kick a ball to her, she'll hit it back to you or she'll, she'll dribble it to you and say so you can kick it. Yeah, but she would, you could run along the side of her out there in the field and she would dribble the ball between her hands and her nose. She was a ball crazy. And tennis balls, if she was in the house, there was a tennis ball somewhere right by her at all times. She, I had this one soccer ball. It was at the perfect, it wasn't aired up 100% where it was like a tight ball. It was a little bit soft, deflated a little bit. It was perfect air pressure in it for her because she could grab it. She could dribble it. She could, you know. She loved, she loved to dribble the ball. I remember one time I took her to Tyler's soccer practice and everybody was like in shock. They couldn't believe how well she was playing soccer out there with us. It was fun. She just wanted the ball. <laughs> and she did, it was, what was, what was funny is she took the ball away from one of, they were just, it was practice. I wouldn't take her to a game. But um, she wouldn't give them their ball back. She kept going out there and, and hitting the ball away from them. It was funny. But we had to end that uh, short, make that a short thing because the administrator of the rec center said, we're not allowed to have dogs. I said, you're, you're a, a, a poor sport. I said, she wants to play soccer. He goes, it's not me. It's... I can get in trouble, so, yeah, rec, I guess for liability reasons too, but yeah, at the rec center, you can't have your dogs, I mean, we can park in the shade and hang out in the car, and I've done that many times when my dogs sit in the shade in my car facing the field and watch Tyler practice while I do whatever in the car. I didn't crochet back then, that would have been the perfect time to crochet, but... Gosh, that was long ago. I hope I didn't miss my turn of talking. I don't think I did. No, I think it's up here. Maybe. Yeah, it's up here. Well, so much for getting off of here, right? Maybe I can... Urban yarn. I haven't. I love Gary at Urban Yard.
shirts. I, I think I have like three of his shirts. I got a gray one, a purple one, and a pink one. With a Buddha. Mama, Mama, Kayla, what should I crochet? Premier Chunky, something like that. Her, she's doing, I guess, um, for the month, for the next seven days, they're doing Big Ball. They're using up, I guess, make a project out of a big ball, something like that. I just got rid of a bunch of my big balls up in my closet. I got, I donated most of them, and I kept all my, um, my Lion Brand Classic. It's not called Classic anymore. It's called something else. I can't remember. It's like $8 a ball, but they have it at Joann's. It's fluffy yarn. I want to make a, well, I made a sweater out of, it's like a bluish gray. I did. I made a cardigan out of one of those colors, but I believe I bought several colors. There's a plum color that I would like to make a cardigan with. But I want to use, I think, another color with it. Like, I don't know why, but I I want to do that. I don't know what I'm going to do with all the sweaters that I have. That I, I've got a container full of sweat. I need to open an Etsy shop and sell some of that stuff. And, I, and the money that, that I get from it, I want to start getting like stuff for Boggy Creek, like crafts and stuff. I'll find something to do with it, but yeah, I get, you know, try to, I figured I would sell them in a, in a Etsy shop. And if I ever have extra boxes of yarn, <laughs> that if is funny. Because I know I have plenty. I'm getting better. In this little, this app that I have for assistance, it's been wonderful. Um, what did I ask it yesterday? My dad asked me something. Oh, I asked about the weather and how, you know, was there any systems out there? And it, and it told me, potentially, that we have a tropical depression going on, you know, out there that could possibly turn into a hurricane. And I was like, wow. It helps you, like, clean up paragraphs or, like, a letter. If I write a letter to somebody, it cleans it up. The spelling, the punctuation, it does all of that. I just went by a house. One year, Lynette was here. I took her to Steenhatchee. And on our way back, there was a house. This house back here I just passed. The yard was on fire. And we had to pull over and help put the fire out. I was banging on the house. There was somebody in there. They were sleeping. We had to... And then somebody finally pulled up. And they're like, this is my neighbor. Anyways, they helped us put the fire out. That There was little, like bottom of the house was starting to catch fire because it looked like it started out by the road and worked its way into the yard and up to the house but yeah the person in the house was sleeping and it was like a couple days later there was a field on fire behind some mobile homes down the road from my house I had to wake people up your backyard's on fire. Might want to keep an eye on it. The fire department put it out. <laughs> but yeah, Lynette was with me that day. Did I say good morning to Uncle Greg? He's probably not on here. He says he watches me every morning. But 
hot gold. I think one night I was there watching him and there's certain areas, I guess they, they'll crush rock and there's gold in there. She's got yarn. Woo, it's been a long day, but we got a lot done. We got all those trees cleared out. The property looks a little ugly, but that's okay. My dad beat me. What is that on the back of that fire truck? It looks like a chicken tied to the back of it. Stuffed chicken. Free tarps, free gloves. I mean, 
they're doing everything they can to help out. I'm sure a lot of it's from FEMA. And, um, but anyways, my poor neighbor, he's like, I gotta go get a tarp. And I'm, and I was like, well, my dad got some free tarps yesterday. And, um, that's where they're giving fuel away. There's big t trucks of gas and they're, they're giving 17 gallons. I don't know why they came up with that weird number, but yeah, everybody's getting 17 gallons a day. They can get it. I think it's awesome. Um, thinking of fuel. Yeah, I got plenty to get home. <laughs> I filled up yesterday morning, so it should at least get me back and forth twice. I have got to get my nails done, and they are disgusting. <sighs> anyways, getting back to the neighbors. But anyways, my poor neighbor, but I told David, my son-in-law, I said, will you help him get, he had some trees. What he needed was somebody to lift him in the bucket so he could cut the limbs, but my son-in-law He's pretty knowledgeable when it comes to heavy equipment. I mean, he can do anything. He's a grown man. He's almost 40. He, he can do anything. He can make anything with his bare hands. So, two lots behind us is the same size as my whole lot. But our lots are long and narrow. Every other vehicle you see, they're pulling a front end loader. Or a trailer. That one looks like it's got a barn on it. He's got a generator in the back of his truck. But this area is it's a lot of hunting woods. Fishing camps and hunting woods. I know I look kind of rough, but that's okay. If my hair's nice and dirty, I can want I can color it. I've got to go to the dermatologist. I've got some skin discoloration on my cheek. A lot of people think I have a bruise. 